We bless your name right now. In Jesus' name, everybody. Amen. 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 Like stand let's go on and read the word. I got to say right now. Get all knocked out at one time. You to get down. But if you just done all of one, one stand. Let's look at Romans chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. That's Romans chapter 1, verse 15 through 17. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Glory to God. And it reads, So, as much as it in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you. That are <laughs> <wrong. laughs> so I'm of the gospel of Christ. Yeah. But it's the power of God unto the salvation to everyone that believes. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just the little by faith. Lord of God, you see the So the devil will look into God's word. I want to see what it says about not being ashamed Hello. of the gospel. Yeah. 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 We know what Dr. Landry, for 16 years he's been here, what he's going to give us. He's going to give us book, chapter, and verse. But today, I want to know what are you going to give them? Because we know Dr. Landry is not ashamed of the gospel. But I want to know, are you? Today's title is, Not Ashamed of the Gospel. So as we look back at our foundational scripture in Romans 1, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are, that are at Rome also. Yeah. So we know this is Paul. Paul, uh, a man of God. But if we, if, we, if we rewind back a little bit, Paul wasn't always a man of God. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> he, he held the jackets of those who persecuted Steve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He knocked on the doors of Christians to get them carried away to jail. Yeah. He went to the courthouses to get the papers to get them carried away. Yeah. But one day, yeah. one day, old Paul had an experience yeah. with Christ himself. Yes. He got blinded on the way to the Lord Now this was a man that knew the word but refused to accept the word for what it was oh. until that day. And I pray that you don't have that same experience that Paul had. Oh. I pray you don't have to go through the same thing. Yeah. But sometimes it takes an experience yeah. for us to realize that oh. oh. we can be here. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So Paul as he says, I'm, I'm ready to preach this gospel. Yeah. Now, 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 what is this gospel? What's the gospel? Right. You look it up in the concordance. It says, it's the good news right. of the coming of the kingdom of God. Right. The gospel is the good news right. of the coming of the kingdom of God. Hello. It is also salvation right. to be obtained in it the good news. We all know what good news and bad news is. Most of the time we get on the news when we don't see some bad news. So most of the time at night we shouldn't be watching the news. We should be reading our Bible, which is the good news about the coming of the kingdom of God. Amen. He says it's also the salvation to obtain in it 
through Christ. This is the salvation. Yeah. A lot of us can raise our hand right now and say, well, pastor, I'm saved. Yes, you are saved, but have you experienced uh -huh. the fullness of salvation? Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Yeah, you may be going to heaven because you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've confessed with your mouth. You've been baptized. Glory to God. But have you experienced the fullness of salvation here on earth? That's what salvation. Well, I give it to you in four folds. It's saved from the penalty of sin. You got that. Once you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're saved from the penalty of sin. Glory to God. The next one. Saved from the power of sin. What does that look like? It looks like when Jesus was in the wilderness and was tempted from the devil. So anytime you're being tempted to do anything that's against God and you can refuse it, that's experience salvation. All right. Amen. 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 Anytime someone, come on, Pastor, make it plain for me. Well, Lord, Anytime you. someone cuts you off in traffic <laughs> and you can be okay with it and not go around and cut them back off, right. not look back and stare at them, not give them the finger, right. not cuss them out. <laughs> Salvation. Yeah. 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 That's a, make it a little more clear for me. Okay. When you pull up to work and someone's in your parking spot, that's not your parking spot because it doesn't have your name on it. And you can be okay with it and find another parking spot. That's experiencing the salvation. When you refuse the power of sin. Yeah. Yes, yes. Number three, saved from the presence of sin. Yeah. What's that look like? Mm -hmm. Let me see. Yes, sir. Well, no, they can't come to my house. <laughs> Why is that? Because I don't know what they may come in and say. In my home, you can't do all that cussing like the say. Uh, Matter of fact, don't even call my phone with it. You don't have to be in the presence of sin. Now, you can choose to be there. All right, man. Or you can choose not to be there. Amen. Amen. I'm not perfect. I used to club, but you will not catch me in the club now. All right. Amen. Amen. Being around drunkards, cussing, fighting, booty shorts, shooting. For what? I don't know. I've been saved from that. So that I get an opportunity to experience the fullness of salvation. You know how peaceful it feels just being at home? Watching the little TV. Inviting someone over and having some nice godly conversation. Amen. Now, I'm not saying you got to talk about the Bible, but we don't have to talk about evil. We don't have to talk about sin. We don't have to talk about what's going on in the world. We can talk about our children. Amen. Amen. We can talk about what vacations we may be getting ready to go on. Amen. Number four, save from the pleasure. Of sin. All right. It shouldn't feel good to sin. All right. You should get a prick in the spirit. Now, now he says we're all going to uh, fall short of the glory. Glory to God. Praise God that he, he died for that. That I may fall. That I may stumble. 
that I may slip, uh -huh. but we should not be sliding into home into sin. It should not feel good to lie. Uh -huh. That's it. Matter of fact, I'm known to be brutally honest. I'm going to tell you just what it is. Yeah, no, you're not helping me. I would prefer to work alone. I'm brutally honest. Yeah, baby, that don't look good on you. You may want to change that. I don't hey, did you forget the pepper uh, on this chicken? Was this the kids? <laughs> Amen. 
I get in, I get in my car and start my car by five. Frank. Uh, I go to work and scan my badge. That is going to let me in by faith. Everything you do should be by faith. If my badge didn't work that day, I would get in my car and believe God by faith. I got another job. Your healing by faith. A lot of us have been saved for years. Some of us was brought up in the church. Yes, yes. But are you experienced the fullness of salvation? All right. All right. Are you experiencing it? Thank you, Lord. Let's look at Mark chapter 8, verse 31. Mark chapter 8, verse 31. We want to get to a place to where we're experiencing this fullness of salvation where we're, where we're not having to call ourselves Christians, but people can see and know that we are Christians. Yeah, Lord. Mark chapter 8, verse 31 says, And he began to teach them that saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed. And after three days rise again. Yes. This is part of the gospel. And he spake that saying openly. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. But when he turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan. For thou savest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. See, Peter didn't want Jesus to leave. He wanted him to stay there. You know, somebody, he can turn, he can take two. He can take some fish and some loaves of bread and, and feed the multitude. I don't want him to go nowhere either. Amen. Jesus turned this two piece <laughs> on from Tuesday from Popeyes to feed the whole block. Yeah. Oh, gee. I wouldn't want him to go either. But he's telling them, you're here about the things of this world, but I'm about my father's business. Yeah. And so we don't want to get to a, a, a place of where we're of the world. Conformed of the world, doing as the world do, but we want to do as our Father yeah, would have us. Yes, sir. Yes. Again, we're not perfect, but right. us making the attempt. Yeah. yeah. Us putting one yeah, foot in front of the other. All right. All right. He died for our sins, so he already knows we're gonna make a mistake. Right. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. But it's been an effort. And when he had called, verse 34, the people unto the disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, yeah. let him deny himself yeah, right. and take up his cross yeah. and follow me. Yeah. What is your cross? Your cross is all your sins that you bear. Yeah. The word says you got to renew your mind daily because he already knows you're going to be out in the world. You're going to be influenced by your co workers. You're going to be influenced by your friends. You're going to be influenced by your family. But the main objective that you should be influenced mostly by is the word of God. I was listening to, I think it was 89.3 this morning on the way here, and it said, Those that read the Bible once a week aren't influenced. Those that read the Bible twice a week Lord are influenced. Yes. It takes for you to read the Bible four to five times a week All right. to be influenced for it to do what? To change right. your yes. life. Amen. 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 So the first foot forward that we yes. should be putting forward is making sure we get the knowledge of reading the Bible. Amen. Well, Pastor, that Bible is pretty big. I don't even know where to start. I just kind of do Russian roulette and flip through pages. All right, we start here. All right. That's a bad excuse. There's so many helpful, uh, so many helpful things that we have. You have the internet that can tell you there's, there's daily scripture readings to start here, start there. There's Bible apps that give you scriptures on a daily, start there. Just to, to get consumed in one scripture, one verse, and expand. And see how it will change your life. Changing what you listen to. The things that you, you, you put in. It's the same thing. The things that you eat will affect your body. The things you listen to will affect your body. The things that you see 
affect your body. The things that you say yes. will affect your body. Yeah. He says, this is the part of taking up your cross, denying your own life. That's the law. He says, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Right. So you want to save your life, but right. pastor, I want to go out still, you know, go to clubs and party, you know, do this. He says that he wants to save his life, but lose his life. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, my in the gospel, yes. the gospel is the good news, yes. the same shall save it. But what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world but lose his soul? Yes. But what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Yes. Whosoever thou shall be ashamed of me, uh -huh. in my words, yes. this is the Bible, in this adulterous and sinful generation yes. of him, yes. also shall the Son of Man be ashamed. Uh -oh. When he comes in glory of his father with the holy angels, Amen. he says, if you're going to be ashamed of me, uh, then I'm going to be ashamed of you. Yes. Which one would you rather have? The world? Uh, or the eternity? Uh, the heavenly father. Yes. Matthew 26, verse 69. And it says, now Peter sat without in the palace. Uh -huh. And the damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus, right? Huh. But he denied. <laughs> but he did not. Hold on. This is Peter, one of the, this is the same Peter that cut off one of the soldiers' ear. The same Peter, one of the twelve, says he did not die before them, saying, I know not what thou sayest. Yeah. And when he had gone out into, into the porch, yeah. Another man saw him and said unto them, that was there. Yeah. Yeah, Lord Jesus. This fellow was also with Jesus in there. Right. And again, he had not denied with them. Oh, no, I swear. Yeah, yeah. I swear. I swear. God, I wasn't with them. I do not know the man. Yeah. And after a while, Came unto him, they stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou art that one. For thou speech, beware of thee. Then again, he cussed and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock. We don't want to be like Peter when we get into a tough situation. When we get into a sticky situation, we get into a uh, an entanglement. Right. We don't want to be like Peter when we get to the place when we get, we want to deny Christ. We don't want to show them uh, the God in you. Yeah. You know, I remember you saw those WWJD bands. What would Jesus do? Yeah. You know, you go, oh, man, let me look. What would you, I ain't going to do it this time. I'm going to do what God, what Jesus would do. I'm going to turn the other cheek. Yeah, we got to get back to that place. We don't want to be as Peter that begin to cuss as the pressure can. Because, I mean, you know, if you're under pressure, he's watching his Lord and Savior being beat. Until, imagine that's going to happen to me next. I don't, I don't know him. And this is what's going to happen when we get to a place of, uh, of not living how we're supposed to live. It says, and Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which he said unto him. You're going to remember the word of God. Yeah. It's going to give you that privilege yeah. spirit and have you align your life. Yeah. We're saying to him, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Yes. And he went out and he weeped. Yeah, he, he felt a way because he knew yeah. he had not done the right thing. Yeah. He knew what he had done Denying Christ, cursing, swearing. None of these things was taught by Jesus as they walked with him. Matter of fact, the word of God tells us that, that we should walk by faith and not by sight. Don't be uh, deterred by what's in front of you. But believe that God can do what? God can bring you through. Nothing is impossible yeah. with God. Yeah. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. 
It's very important. <laughs> because Jesus, he came for a specific reason. Yeah, right. Verse 32, Matthew 10 says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, right. him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But uh, whosoever shall deny me before men, yeah. him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Wow. Think not that I've come to, to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Yeah. Or sword is the word of God. Let the word be your weapon. Wow. He says, for I have come to set a man that varies against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Yep. And a man's foes wow. shall be they of his own household. Wow. He that loved his father or mother more than, than me wow. is not worthy of me. Wow. And he that loved his son or daughter more than me yep. is not worthy of me. Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember? Wow. He asked him the second Sacrifice his son. Yeah. Yes. We. The obedience. Yes. Which is greater yeah. than the sacrifice. Oh. <laughs> he is not worthy of me. He that loveth his son. Verse 38, he says, He that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Yeah. He that receiveth you, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. All right. I encourage you, receive him. Oh, Jesus. And I don't mean just receive him in a manner of, oh, I'm going to heaven. I'm saved. I'm good to go. No, I mean receive him in a fullness and, and, and trying to walk your life out in Christ. Yeah. Amen. 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 I know he's going to ask me some. Dad, why do you always bring me up in your sermons? Because if, if I can say anyone that I've seen in my life walking out their, their life as a young man in the way Christ would, I know. it would be you. Yeah, yeah there's some times, you know, Amen. Amen. I know Jesus would probably keep his room a little cleaner. But <laughs> <laughs> and if Jesus had a little sister, he probably would pick him. <laughs> but the way you're living your life, uh, the school you're going to, uh, and this young man, hey, why you don't hang out with him anymore? Oh, you want to hang out with the cool kids. I'm cool. I'm going to hang out with him, Dad. Okay. Why you don't hang out with him no more? Oh, he was cussing, and, and they want to be messing with all a bunch of girls and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool, Dad. I'm going to hang out with him. He would rather not hang out with someone no, he would rather be by himself than hang out with someone who is not doing the right thing. Uh, he just received an award uh, called the Director's Choice Award. He's in an orchestra class. I don't know how many kids in there, but it's a lot of kids. You can just imagine they got the viola, viola, uh, the bass, the harp, the bunch of people. But they got all these instruments. And so I just named five instruments. And at least each instrument, you got at least three or four different people playing. That's 20 people at least. Let's just say 30. I know some instruments I left out. Out of 30 kids, his directors chose him. They gave out two leadership awards for his, for his eighth grade. But they chose him. He got leadership last year. They chose him as this king that's optimistic. This king who's doing, always doing the right thing. Yeah. This king that, that cares about others. Yeah. Yeah. They chose him. Yeah. And now, I was going to tell you, I'm brutal enough. This, this isn't a typical school where he's, he's the only black kid. Yeah. So you got to imagine, there were some white kids that were upset. There were some Asian kids that were upset. Why is that? Because their parents hold them at a really high standard. And this year, he's been asking me, he's like, I say, how's it going to work today? Oh, it's cool. I was supposed to be first chair for this song. I was supposed to be second chair for this song. I said, what happened? 
The girl wouldn't get up. I said, what you do? You tell her to get up? He's like, no, I just let her happen. I said, the director tell her to get up? He's like, no, we know when that song comes up, we're supposed to get up and move. But she didn't want me to, she didn't want to move. She didn't want to be second chair. She didn't want me in front of her. I said, don't worry about it, son. Yeah. It'll all work out. That's it. That's it. But how many of us would have handled that situation that same way? <laughs> first, first chair, and I play basketball. And I, and, I, and you give me an opportunity to start, all start, and I was, I used to be sitting on bitch. Yeah. Oh no, 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 no. Watch out, brother, you on bitch today. Because like, you're only supposed to have five people on the court. Yeah. Now I'm on the court too. The rest of looking like, oh, y'all got six people on the court. Yeah, I know I'm starting. I'm going to a couple. What you going to do? I'm starting. But this young man, he humbled himself. Yeah. He humbled himself. That's it. That's it. That's it. And at the end, received an award when God exalted him in front of all these parents. Yeah. I got on the field trip the Saturday before. The two directors pulled me to the side and they said, Man, we wish we could call me last. I said, really? That's like, now, don't get us wrong. Our, none of our kids are bad, but none of them are lost. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Elementary school, fourth and fifth grade, they said about me. They, they put two handicapped kids, one on the right side, one on the left side. Yeah. Mm. I'm like, I was going to tell them about this is grade drop. I'm like, hey, how you got to be? Yeah. He's like, yeah, I got to take notes for these two handicapped kids. No, you don't. Uh-uh. Who I need to talk to? We got to get back. Yeah. But they recognized something about him. He genuinely wanted to help people. Yes. He would hold these handicapped kids' hands and, and put them on the swing and push them. He pushed one kid in and the other kid didn't push me. He'd run over there and push them. It's his heart. Yes. Yes. Right. You know, the word God tells us out of the mouth of babes. Those kids wanted to be chosen. They wanted that director's choice. And a lot of us, we want to be chosen. But I'm here to proclaim, you have been chosen. Once you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, you have been chosen. But it's up to you to walk the walk. Talk to talk. You know, live that God-like life. Um, yes. In Galatians 6, 6, it says, Let him that is taught in the word, which Dr. Rev Dr. Reverend A.M. Landry gives us the word, book, chapter, and verse, so we can find it for ourselves. If you didn't bring your opinion pad to take notes, that's your own fault. Watch it on Facebook. But it says, Let him that is taught in the word communicate Unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whosoever a man sow, that shall he also reap. So if you sow, sow in the, the world, you're going to reap the world. But if you sow the word, you're going to reap the word. For he that sow to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he sow to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Pastor, I tried doing good. It just ain't working out for me. It says don't be weary. Why? For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially to them who are in the household of faith. He said unto all men. Yes. Who's after all? Yes. Nobody. That means enemies too. Yes. Oh, that ain't just on feet right there, right? Oh, Do good unto an enemy. The word of God says yes. yes. Feed your enemy if he's hungry. Give him something to drink if he's thirsty. Yes. As a matter of fact, they would do this in, 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 in a worldly manner. Yes. We wanted to make the war fair. Oh. Yes, he says you to heat coals on your head by doing what? The godly thing. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. He says, don't get weary. Right. Yeah. Well, Pastor, I've been, you know, the word of God says if you, if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. You know, I gave a, a big offer last time and still ain't got it. It's been a whole two months. <laughs> <laughs> he said, it's coming. Hold on. It's coming. Hold on. The main thing we got to do is our obedience. When God speaks, we do it. Yeah. I was at work, and God told me to give this lady at work that was making the same amount of money that I was making, give her $500. And I said, God, I got a wife and two kids. She don't have a husband, and she only got one kid. Hmm. Lord, I don't have it up. Yeah. <laughs> and he just said, do what I told you. And watch what I do for you. He turned that 500 into 10,000. Oh. I gave him 500 in June. In September, my aunt came and decorated a portion of our home. And then came out again in January and decorated the rest part. We go in our room now and just look at it and be like, baby, I don't want to sleep in here. like hotel room. <laughs> How many of us know won't he do it? But it's according to your faith. It's according to what you believe. It's according to what you will go back. First Thessalonians 5.14, it says, Now we exhort you. What is the word for? It's to exhort one another. Brother, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. Be patient. Be patient. You done got your blood pressure up because somebody else. I refuse. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. But ever follow what which is good. Yeah. Both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Yeah. Pray without ceasing. Yeah. And everything give yeah. thanks. Yeah. This is a part of the gospel. Yeah. Being patient. Yeah. is a part of the gospel. Yeah. Not rendering evil for evil yeah. is part of the gospel. Yeah. Rejoicing is part of the gospel. Yeah. Praying is a part of the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Doing good both among yourself and to all men yep. is a part of the gospel. Yeah. That's when God says, buy they food to the lady that's counting yeah. out change yeah. in Walmart, yeah. 10, 20, 30, oh. 40, 50. Oh, no. Let, can we just put the bread back? I don't want to get the bread this time. Yeah. Uh, how much is it now? No, can you get the syrup? And we standing back there watching. Well, when we got an opportunity to do good, You got an opportunity to be a blessing where God can see when someone when someone else will be able to see the God in you. That's it. If I would have done that, it would have been tight this whole week. Not if you believe what the word says. The word says so you shall reap. I'm gonna believe that whatever I'm in, God will get me out. Yeah. I believe. I'm looking for an opportunity to believe God to do something for me. In everything, give thanks. Part of the gospel, giving thanks. If you complain more than you're giving thanks, you're not living the gospel. You're not experiencing the fullness of that salvation that you're supposed to be walking in. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. This is God's will for you. Everything I would know. Rejoice, giving thanks, doing good, not bringing evil for you. This is God's will in your life. You know, a lot of us say, you coming over, God will be done. He's telling you his will that he wants to be done. Quench 
not the spirit, despise not prophecy, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you home. He says, set yourself apart from the world. Set yourself apart from what else, what everyone else is doing. Be the one that stands out. Be that one that gets that God's choice of me. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless yeah. to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'll leave you with this last scripture. 1 Peter 5. And 5. It says, likewise, yes. you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yeah. Yea? All you be subject one to another yeah. and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud yeah. and give a grace unto the humble. Yeah. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, oh, yeah. that he may exalt you yes, oh, yeah. in due time. Yeah. I'll come here today to encourage you. Do the right thing. Yes, Get in your word. Try God. Try. Yeah. Try the word. Yeah. And I don't mean just for today. I mean over a period of time. Oh. And see if the word of God won't work out better in your life than what you've been trying to do on your own. Yeah. See, you see, a lot of times <laughs> I was watching this sermon and this pastor, he said, you know, the word of God says, cast your cares upon God. And a lot of times what we do, we'd be like, I'm going to cast my cares care upon God and we'll pray, God, I'm casting this 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 illness or uh, I'm, I'm casting this debt or um, I'm, I'm, I'm casting this family problem on you, God. I'm giving it to you. You take it too long, God. I got it right now. Ah. And that's where a lot of us will find ourselves. Yeah. But I'm encouraging you. Walk by faith. Walk out the word of God in your life. And I'm not saying go cold turkey. I'm just saying give it a try. A little bit. By a little bit. By a little bit. By a little bit. Give it an extra offer. Trying to give, you know, a part of your time. You know, it would be good if we can give all of our time, but sometimes we got to get ourselves in a better money management situation. Give a part of it and then work your way. I want to give 10% then, and then, you know, get to a place where I want to, I'm at a place where I want to give 11 and 12% because if I'm giving 11 and 12%, God, I'm believing what the word of God says, you're going to open up the windows of heaven and pull me out of blessings. So that 12% I've been giving, Lord, you need to work on my boss so I can get that 12% raise. Yeah. So that I can that 12% I'm giving will actually add up to that 10% that's small. Wow. So I'm going to encourage you. Do good unto others. You know, be patient. Wow. Make the right decisions. Let them see the God in you. Wow. Let them, don't call yourself a Christian. Right Let them call you a Christian by your fruit. Wow. Well, I trust you got something out of the day's word.